Hey everyone, Cam here, and today we're gonna to do a Q&A episode. It's been years, really, since I've done something like this. And so I posted it in the community tab asking what questions you guys had, and today we're just gonna answer them. So I hope you enjoy it. The first question is, is it really possible to moderate gaming? Now, some people have noticed on the channel that I've been more open recently about including moderation as part of the conversation generally healthy gaming as part of the conversation. And for some people, that's been an issue. For some people, you want this channel to be just completely no games, uh, no gaming is allowed, and that's just a very black and white stance. For me, I believe that there are many more gamers out there than just those who can no longer play at all, although that is what I choose to do. So I don't personally play any video games or the only game I play is chess and chess for me has always been okay. The key is to know yourself and to know what ultimately helps you be your best. For some people that will mean no gaming. Maybe that's because there's an addiction. Maybe that's because it's just a distraction. It's just unproductive or it's just too difficult to moderate. For other people, it might be choosing different types of games to play. Ones where it's not so online and competitive, less multiplayer, more single player narrative based games. Ultimately, you have to know yourself. And on this channel going forward, what I'm looking to do is to just be a bit more inclusive with different types of gaming and supporting people to ultimately find what balance or control looks like for them. So of course, we'll still have a ton of content on not gaming at all and helping people really take those steps forward. But at the same time, there are many, many, many people out there, including families and young people who moderation is more of the goal. And I wanna make sure that we serve them as well. So to answer your question, yes, it is possible to moderate, although uh, you have to know yourself and you also have to be aware that spending years trying to moderate for a little bit of fun isn't really a good trade-off. And really, if moderation comes easy, then that's okay. But if you're spending all your energy trying to moderate, you know, it might be better spent in other areas. The next question is, is it possible to keep friendships if you were no longer gaming, but have in the past? So I do have a, a video on this about how to stay friends with your gamer friends. And this is unfortunately one of the transitions that will take place in your life. So when you stop gaming, some of those friends are not gonna be supportive. You want to identify the ones that are supportive and you want to identify the ones that aren't. The friends who are not supportive, they're not really your friends. They're just friends out of convenience. You play the same game or you spend the same time online and that is why you're friends. Whereas if you move to a different city, if you stopped playing games, if you found new interests, you wouldn't necessarily stay friends. And that can be a bit of a hard lesson for us to learn, but it's just important to remember that in life, you'll go through different chapters, different stages, and those stages and chapters will have a different group of friends as well. So there will be friends that you have that will stay your friend forever, no matter what, even if, for instance, you live in Thailand like I do now, not in the US or not in Canada. However, many of your friendships will change and that certainly will happen when you stop gaming, but just identify the ones who are supportive because those are the ones who really care about you and really wanna see you be your best. With those friends, find new ways to interact with them. Maybe that's on phone calls or staying in touch through different apps in different ways. The next question is what to do if you catch yourself gaming and you don't feel like stopping in the moment? It was along the same lines as another question around relapse cycles. Now, in the moment, if you want to play, then nothing I say is going to stop you from doing that. The only thing I'll say, and I do have a video about this on what happens when you relapse, it's important to recognize that ultimately, gaming may give you that temporary fix. It may relieve that tension you feel in the moment, but it's not gonna solve any of your problems. And no one else is really coming to save you. So although in the moment, maybe you just wanna play that one game or maybe you just wanna kind of finish it and that's okay. But ultimately it's more about the mindset of where are you going 
and what are you working on and how does gaming fit into your life in that way and maybe you want to finish that game but really at the end of the day is it really serving you and that's ultimately what the question is always all about and I do think that for me in my situation when I decide to stop I went through a bit of a period of time of being able to play I describe it as my last hurrah so I played for a couple months and at the end of that I knew that I was never going back and so I kind of got closure with that experience and that certainly helped me it would be very easy for someone to take that advice and use it to justify playing for months and months or years on end so you have to know yourself and you have to know really what's serving you and where you need to make your changes and ultimately how serious and committed you are to do that because it's one thing to say you want to do it it's another to actually do it it's one thing to watch a video like this about it it's another in the moment when you actually have to make that different decision making that different decision is the key and so don't lose sight of that no video no mentor no coach nobody can save you but you can save yourself if you catch yourself in that moment and adjust and and shift where you're going the next question is about do i have experience with adhd and video games does it make a person more susceptible to addiction so i do have adhd and i am currently on medication for it that's been a really long journey i'll do a video on that so, uh, coming soon now over 80 percent of the clients that we work with at game quitters both individual gamers and families all have gamers with adhd adhd and problems with video games are very much linked and part of that is because games are designed with a lot of innate goal setting for someone with adhd we're vulnerable to a couple things. Number one, we're vulnerable to hyperstimulation, really kind of getting focused and, and finding a lot of excitement in that. We're also vulnerable to lacking motivation in things that we're not interested in. So gaming can be very exciting and very interesting and it can capture our attention. Another thing that we can struggle with with ADHD is transitions. So once we start gaming, it can be difficult to transition off of it. Another thing that we'll struggle with is internal motivation so really finding that internal desire to do different things whereas when we're externally motivated with maybe uh, for me that's like looking at the number of views i have on youtube it's it's a vanity metric but it gives me some indication of where i'm at it also just gives me something to measure against so if i look at you know, on average, I think we do about 68,000 views a month. It's like, how do I get that to 100,000 views? Well, I need to make better videos. I need to bring back a sense of community. There are a bunch of things I need to do that will make a better experience for everybody and then lead to more views. The number itself isn't that important, but it just gives me something to measure against to understand uh, or to give myself more motivation to work towards it. So games are very good at always providing you what to do next and so someone with adhd with all the vulnerabilities we already have that innate goal setting in games can be really potent and can definitely lead us to playing more than we should and i'll definitely do some more content on adhd and gaming here soon okay another question is how to not go from gaming to mindless scrolling on your phone and just a big amount of phone use this piggybacks off of another question, which was how would you schedule your days as I only have one or two things to do and then I'm kind of bored. This ultimately comes down to when you break a habit, you have to replace it with something new or you'll just go to the next most convenient thing. So if you're gaming and you decide to stop gaming, well, it's very easy to find yourself just mindlessly browsing or watching content or just spending too much time on social media. That's because you lack intention into what you're actually doing with your time and with your focus and your energy. If you only have one or two things scheduled during the day, well, then you're gonna be bored. You're gonna be sitting around, you're gonna be staring at the ceiling, wondering why you shouldn't just play video games or why you shouldn't just watch content on YouTube or on TikTok or on Instagram to keep yourself stimulated. Instead of a bigger question, which is ultimately, what are you working towards? What are your goals? Where do you want to spend your time? 
How are you scheduling your day? Not just with the obligations you have like work or school, but with the things that you really care about and wanna move you forward. So for me, obviously today, that's this video. After this, I'll have some work, I have some calls later, and there are some other things I wanna to do today. Having those actually scheduled into my day, even if it's my free time, even if it's just a hobby or a passion project I have, then allows me to not get stuck sitting around and then just going to the most convenient thing to give me the quick dopamine hit, the easy stimulation, and of course, that's content and social media. And so you really need to be intentional about what else are you gonna do with your time so you're not sitting around just mindlessly browsing and finding yourself replacing gaming with another time-wasting activity. I'll definitely do some more videos on each of these topics as we go forward here right away. I'm working really hard kind of behind the scenes, trying to you know, not just increase the amount of content I'm putting out, but make it better, make it more engaging, and to bring back that sense of community with you guys because uh, when I first started YouTube, we had such a great community here and, and we had, yeah, just a lot of passion behind that. And somewhere along the way, that changed a little bit. I take full responsibility for that. Ultimately, I was traveling a lot, speaking a lot, and just kind of in working on the business in a different way. And now I'm excited. I, I have a place for the next year here in Thailand. I have some new upgrades to the equipment and just a, a renewed energy to really focus on on YouTube and videos and, and really serving you guys so you can go out there and live your best life. So I'm excited to kind of just like bring some new energy to YouTube again, and I appreciate all you guys watching. So uh, thanks for being here, and if you're new, hit subscribe, leave a comment below, say hi. I always love to hear where you guys are at, and if I can help in any way, leave a comment below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But that's it for me today, guys. I hope you have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon. All right, peace.